Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, steady trying to be about the business, too, y'all. I, I'm, 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 I'm doing all I can. But you know what's crazy? In the efforts that I make, I can do more. You know, my father used to tell me something when I was growing up. He said, son, when you've done your best and you've done all you can, sit still for a second and just do a little bit more. Always remember that. He said, when you've done the best you can and you can done all you can think of, he said, sit still for a minute and do some more. And you know what I've discovered in my life? I always have a little more. I ain't ever just out, out, out completely. I can't take another step. There ain't another breath in me. There ain't, there ain't another thought I can produce. I'm never completely out, man. Just take a rest for a minute, man. And then j just do a little bit more. And that, that I can't tell you how many times that's helped me get over the top. You know, I was watching a, a documentary about people climbing uh, Mount Everest and how difficult climbing Mount Everest was and how uh, they have on the hill something called like a death zone or killing zone where the majority of people run out of oxygen and they have to turn back. Well, what's crazy is it's, it's right in view of the summit. You can actually see the top of Mount Everest from there. But it's but it's that little bit that's left that's just most difficult. Now I, I I forgot all the reasons why they said most people don't make it from there, and more people have lost their lives in that area. I, I don't know what it is, but the people that make it to the top of Mount Everest, they all had to go through that same zone or that same area, but they had a little bit more that allowed them to get to the top. You know, a lot of people have had accidents up there trying that, so I'm not even really sure if Mount Everest analogy is a good one. But let's just break it down a little bit more. Let's just talk about life. There's a poem I learned uh, back when I was pledging. It's called Don't Quit. It goes like this. If I make a mistake, I'm, I'm just trying to drum it up. So here we go. It says, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when your funds are low and your debts are high, when you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when cares are pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't quit. For life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us must sometimes learn. And many a fellow has turned about when he might have won had he stuck it out. So don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and a faltering man. And often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learns too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. It's your silver tint of your clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you mustn't quit. I remember it because I had a special method of helping you remember stuff back then, but I remembered it. And that poem right there has kept me. You know, I've, we often talk about scripture and, and everything, and, and you know, I, don't, I don't see how I could live without it. But every now and then, man, somebody has a writing. God puts a writing on somebody's heart that delivers a message, man, that can help people. I use every motivational tool that I possibly can to climb this ladder of success or try to be the best father and the best husband I can be. I've done a lot of changing over the years, and so have you. But change is necessary in order to grow. If you don't make changes, folks, you can't grow. I was a young man on my set. I kept looking at him, man, a sharp little young dude just on my set. And he had these dreads. And I mean, they were, I, they were super long, man. They were 
well below the middle of his back. I mean, it was just long. And he kept talking to me, and he kept talking to me, and talking to me. So your man kept talking to me, and I said, hey, man, you know, you do your a huge self a favor in the business you're in if you got a haircut. You would do yourself a huge favor. I said, your image is everything, man. I said, you keep stopping me in the hallway to try to tell me what you're doing, what you are. But all I see is your hair. And I keep trying to figure out what you're doing with all that hair, man. Now, you can feel how you want to feel, but I'm like an employer. I employ people. So when I'm walking through the hallway and I try to think of you traveling with me and you sitting in a meeting with me, I try to imagine you in your suit sitting there talking business with me. And so just like other employers are, I'm just having a real story with you. So I said, man, you ought to consider cutting your hair. He said, man, Mr. Harv, I've been growing this hair since I was a little boy. I said, how old are you now? He said, 28. I said, well, how long you want to hang on to what you was when you was a little boy? You know, if you started growing your hair when you were a teenager, I mean, you're 28 now. What we, and I said, so let me help you understand something. Let me, let me ask you something. What does it do for you? He said, man, it's just who I am. It's, 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 it's. I said, so you your hair? He said, no, no, but it's a part of me. I say, that part of you that you're hanging on to, what does it do for you? I just like it. Well, dog, I like ice cream. But I feel that but if I hang on to ice cream and eat ice cream every single day, my body gonna reflect that. What is it that you hanging on to that you don't want to let go of that's prohibiting you from being what all you can be? See, it's hard to be what all you can be if you wanna keep being all you was. Don't that make sense to you? So I I can't tell you how many times I've had to change. Change is necessary to grow. You can't be all you can be if you want to keep hanging on to all you was. That don't make no sense. How do you go forward if you keep going backwards? You can't stay here and go there. Do you understand that? If you want to go over there, you must remove yourself from right here. Oh, I got right here is comfortable. I got right here is safe. But over there is where the shade is. Over there is where the fruit is. Over there is where the opportunity is. Over there is where the mountain of gold is. So why you stuck on here? You got to leave here to go over there. You can't be all you can be if you want to stay stuck on who you was. Change is growth is necessary, y'all. Let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. This is a massacre. There's no other way to say it. Officials found four people dead. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. In the early morning of November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho college students in the prime of their lives were found brutally stabbed to death in their home. We believe it was a targeted attack. Police investigating the mysterious murders of four Idaho college students now say the threat to the community may not be over. We believe it was a targeted attack. Who on earth would do something like this and why? Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again, another blessed day. I ain't gonna look, man. Listen, 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 listen. Maybe it sounds as though I'm getting on your nerves by reminding you to be grateful. So I tell you what, today I'm not gonna get on your nerves. Do like you want to do. <laughs> Just go ahead. You, you've all heard this before. Do like you want to do. Heard it do like you want to do. Yeah, you know that way. That way, man. You know, not, not, not. How about that? You know, you want to be grateful. Go ahead. You want to act like you know you woke yourself up. Go ahead. You want to start your day on the wrong foot or wrong side of the bed. Hey, man. Go ahead. I just be trying to offer a way to get your day started the right way. So, but today though, because today is going to be a special day for me. Let me just start by saying to all of you, do like you want to do. 
Mm, yo, yo. It's not encouraging. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it is. It is, Shirley. Do like you want to do. And oh. I am going to do the same. You got to motivate oh, people. Shirley, I, no, 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 no. You know what? You're a motivational speaker. Yeah, Shirley. But you know, when you're talking to somebody, you, you kind of feel like they ain't listening. Like I mentor a kid. Yeah. And a lot of times what makes it hard to mentor him is he don't listen. Uh-huh. Now, and it becomes hard because I could have saved him so much grief, but he don't listen. He got a counter for everything I say. Uh-huh. So right. you know what? The other day he needed mentoring. And as I was talking That's to him, I was do. watching, and I was kind of watching him look off, and I stopped talking. <laughs> and he said, uh, Mr. Harvey, why'd you stop talking? I said, because I'm looking at you and you ain't listening. Well, I was just thinking about something else for a minute. Okay, cool. <laughs> and he went on and made a mistake. I, I just, I can't help you. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Harvey Morning Show. Welcome to the ride, y'all. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Jr. Government name, Kill Spade, and the legend that is nephew Tommy. Junior, anything on your mind today? Yeah, yeah uh, that, that do what you want to do attitude, huh? What yeah. does that lead you back to? See, that that attitude right there, you'll find yourself right back at God's foot. Well, you know, that do like you want to can work both ways because it depends on what you want to do. Now, if you want to do good today, some good going to come out of it. But if you want to be negative, then some negative going to come out of it. So you can be grateful or, or you can act like you in charge of stuff. I don't know how you think that's going to work out for you. But the great thing that I've done this year is for the first time, and I kid you not, the first time in my life, I have really just handed it over. I didn't gave it all to God. Oh, man, I, 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 this is for the first time in my life, and I'm going to be real with you. I've ever just turned it over to him and said, hey, man, you do it. I didn't got it about far as I can go, and it wasn't me. I just slowed the process by doing stupid stuff I wanted to do, and he had to help me get out of it and to learn all these lessons. I don't need no more lessons. I'm through. You do it. <laughs> Thank you. So you motivated and you didn't even want to motivate. Look at you. Coming up, <laughs> it is time to run that prank back. We'll hear from the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Well, Shirley, her husband is drunk, and we're going to give her a call about her drunk-ass husband. <laughs> Um, I wish that was the title. The title is your drunk husband, but really it's your drunk ass husband. You, know. <laughs> you missed the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, add a little more to flavor kind. to it, yeah. your drunk ass husband. <laughs> and I am so excited, you all, because, uh, you, you know, can I just say this? August 24th, next week, yes, and we're going to be celebrating all week, but August 24th is one year of cancer free one oh, year of cancer free right. so my man, i am God. celebrating my man. celebrating especially when i especially when i hit the stage i am celebrating so come celebrate right. with your boy august 24th is uh-huh. one year cancer free and i'm just woo, woo, my soul looks back in wonder mm, yes. mm, mm, how i got over how i got over <laughs> yes. so y'all better come tell on, somebody yes. mm, tell somebody it is possible you can get through it it can be done a survival man, a real one. But let's get on back to it. Your drunk ass husband. Yeah, your drunk ass husband. <laughs> See that transition? Right, your it. drunk ass husband. Cancer survivor, switch to the prank. <laughs> okay, drunk straight stupid. Right okay. Drunk ass husband. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? You gotta hold on a minute, okay? All right. I got your phone. I'll give your wife a call. Hello? Hello? Right. right now, you're inebriated, sir. Okay, right now I should be taking you in, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You let me, if Hello? she's able to come and pick you up, I'll let her come get you. All right, Hello? Officer Brian is going to Officer Brian's going to put you in his squad car. I'm going to call your wife. I, I, I've got the phone dialing now, all right? Okay. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Hello, who am I, who am I speaking with, please? Who is this? This is Officer Daniels. Uh, Officer Daniels, you just called from... It, this is my husband's number. Who is the, uh, who is Officer Daniels? 
I am Officer Daniels, ma'am. Your, your husband's actually been pulled over, and he's been uh, actually he's in uh, another officer's car. He's uh, he's a little bit inebriated here, and we're trying to see about getting him picked up. I'm trying my best not to take him in today, so I'm trying to be a good Samaritan. I'm trying to get Wait, someone to come and pick him up. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. You you got my husband. Uh, I, what I got here on the driver's license is uh, Kenny Kenny. And he's with you now. He's actually in Officer Brian's uh, squad car right now. So uh, he was actually uh, bobbing and weaving out on the road, and we pulled him over. He's not creating any problems. The young lady wasn't creating any problems. So what we're trying. What we're trying to do is get somebody to come and pick him up. You have my husband because my husband is at work, so he can't be in no office of Brian or in your car. And, and okay. Back up. Did you say, tell me again, did you say somebody's with Kenny? There, is, there was a young lady in the car, man. We're actually letting her go because she's not inebriated. Oh. Uh, oh, from oh, the looks of it, somebody, she's calling somebody to, to pick her up now. Man, so. no, no, I, I can't believe this. <laughs> Kenny, and I know that dirty son <laughs> got nobody in my car. That's my car. And you said that he had, tell me this, officer, tell me this. Look at that and tell me what she looked like. It better not be that better not be the one I think she is. I have no idea exactly. Excuse me, ma'am. I know. Ma what, what exactly is your name? about in my car he's supposed to be working. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Jazz? Jasmine. Okay. You're Jasmine. Okay. Bridget. No, just stay there. We'll, we'll talk to you in a moment. It was, it, her name is Jasmine. I'm not yes, sure who yes, she is okay. in relation to Katie, yeah. but... Keep him well, there. We, keep, keep it, yeah, hold him there till I get there. So I'm on my way. I'm on my way right now. Hey, Bridget, I want you to watch these children for me until I get back. I'm going to see if I can give me a ride up to the truck stop, and I'll be All back right. in a minute. Hello? Yeah. Hello? I'm still here. Are you, are you, are I'm you here. there? I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, okay ma'am, listen, I can't, I can't stay here... Too much longer. I can I can stay here maybe another 15, 20 minutes. Somebody come get the car, and but I got to keep moving here. I'm just trying to do a favor, and not listen, take this guy listen. in. I'm I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I got my purse in my hand. I'm on my way to that truck stop. Please don't take that nowhere, cause I got something for his. And when I get there, I hope like hell it ain't that that's been calling me to with me all through the night. Leave her there till I get there. Because I got some things that I need to take care of this day. Don't move the squad car till I get there. I'm on my way right now. Right now. I'll be there in a minute. I well, that took my car and picked up that today. We done had arguments over this. It better not be that. It better not. I bet you it better not be her. It better not be her. I'm on my way. I'll be there in a minute. I'll be there. Okay, Keep okay. that till I get there. Okay. Well, do you know, there's a guy that was with Kenny. Let me close my door so you can hear me better, man. Uh, yeah, there was okay. another gentleman that was in the back seat of the car that was uh, riding with Kenny and the young lady. I don't give a about no other riding with Kenny. You just make sure he's there when I get there. Okay, okay. Now, do you know who this other gentleman, do you know uh, 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 Nephew Tommy? I don't care about no Nephew, nephew Tommy. <laughs> nephew Tommy. <laughs> Cynthia. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. Your husband, Kenny, got me to prank phone call you. Man, f <laughs> you got to, you got to, you, you and Kenny can kiss so let me tell you what was just going to happen to Kenny, Nephew Tommy. I was going to go down to Bankhead in 285 and f and tell him when he get home, he's still going to be f Oh. oh, my God. You all right? Oh, my God. No, nah, I'm a chick. Where you at, Tom? <laughs> oh, man. He told me, he said, man, my wife don't play. He said, I call my know. wife, man, and prank my wife. You all right, Cynthia? I'm good, Tom. I'm good. I'm good. But what <laughs> for real, though? Is he at work or you with No, he at work. He at work. He at work. He in your car at work. He works. You better be at work. <laughs> Hey, baby, tell me this. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Holland Morning Show. I don't know. <laughs>
All right, <laughs> nephew, thank you. Uh, coming up next, thank you. ask the chief love officer. You are welcome. Our CLO, Mr. Steve Harvey, for Ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. At the top of the hour in entertainment news, Lori Harvey celebrated the launch of her Yebra swim line with her main man, Damson Idris. That's right. Ooh, Kiki Palmer <laughs> has turned lemons into lemonade and ushers new video. And the Upshaws get a fourth season on yes. Netflix. That's yes. good news. And it's all coming oh, up. Oh, my gifts. Uh-huh. At Shout the top of the you. hour. <laughs> but right now, it is time to ask the CLO. This one's from Bertina in Detroit. Bertina writes, I'm studying for a nursing exam and my study partner and I had sex in my kitchen while my husband was asleep in our den. The sneaking uh, around with him made it more exciting. Uh, Would we be crazy to try it during, uh, try doing it at least one more time? Hmm. I think y'all was crazy. Uh, see, I don't, let me explain something to you. Everybody want to. You need to get, get away from your study part. What? Because let me tell you something, man. This man right here, he ain't rap right. Y- y'all had sex in the kitchen yeah. while your husband was asleep in the den, and he and he took that chance in that man's house. Listen to me. This man right here that you, you your study partner is incapable of making smart decisions. Would y'all be wrong to try it again? Oh, that's already been decided. He's hiding. Yeah, he gonna do it. I I can't tell you how thrilling this gonna be (laughs) when when Horace (laughs) wake up. (laughs) I I, I can't tell you. (laughs) Well, it's gotta be Horace, cause her name Bertina. I don't know who did that to their baby. (laughs) That ain't no new name. (laughs) And Horace, let me tell you something. Get your ass up. <laughs> Ain't no young dude in the den sleep while his wife in the kitchen with another young dude stuck. Okay. Uh, and then they're, they're having sex and oh. he don't wake up. You got to be older Ooh. to sleep Ooh. through that. That's too much. Ooh. All right. Uh, moving on to Michelle and Raleigh. Michelle says, my boyfriend told me that I expect too much of him when I moved in. He gave me his home office to work in. I asked him to buy a TV for the room, and he said he let me use the room so I can buy my own TV. Was it wrong to ask him to buy it? (laughs) What kind of... Listen, (laughs) y'all relationship down to rooms and TV. Yeah. TV's 400. I I mean, damn. I mean, (laughs) dog, I don't... That's what she's saying. Y'all see... Not they not married, right? No, just boyfriend and girlfriend. See, y'all be y'all be hooking up with these people, and and you don't even know who how the, how they are, who they are. And so you all move in too early, and as you learn these people, you have these types of discoveries. You could have asked for the TV when y'all was just dating, and then I bet your ass wouldn't have moved in then. But see, no. You wait till you move in and then you think you can ask for a TV. Well, he ain't buying you no TV. So was she wrong to ask him? No, she wasn't wrong to ask. If you're sleeping with a man, (laughs) you can't get a TV? Come on, that part. I'm just (laughs) trying to... Just trying to... You can't... Can't get nothing. Fifty dollars. I mean, what we say? You you sleeping with a man, you can't ask for a TV? Right. He said, hey, I let you hey, use the room. You could buy your own TV. <laughs> that's enough. He drew the <laughs> Man, y'all, what else you want, man? <laughs> man, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right uh, moving on to Tracy. <laughs> Tracy in Columbia. Tracy says, I met a man online, and he's been telling me all about the stuff he expects us to do sexually. If we ever get to that stage, he might be disappointed in me because I am not that experienced. Should I be honest with him or will it run him off? Run him off? <laughs> run him off? Uh, <laughs> Do he sound like he concerned with being ran off? Uh, <laughs> Lady, listen to me. You don't see these red flags? This this is what he do. You ain't the first person that heard this set up before. What is he talking about doing to us? Oh, dog, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, what I'm going to do is, before I come over, 
I'm gonna stop down here at the poultry shop and I'm, I'm gonna buy two chicken. What is that for? Oh, we're gonna fry some chicken. Oh, no, 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 no. No, they're gonna be live. <laughs> live I'm chickens. Get, I'm gonna get two live chickens. <laughs> I'm gonna be cocky yeah. doing Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, on Friday. Uh huh. I'm gonna swing by the pet store. All right. Uh huh. Do you have an extra room at your house? No. Where'd she get the chicken? No, no, no. That's a poultry store. Oh. oh okay. They used to have them in the hood a long time ago. You could actually go down there and buy live chickens and kill them yourself. That's why you knew they were fresh. They used to have that in the hood a long time. The poultry time. store. Yeah, in the 60s. In the 60s, like some places in the oh. hood had chickens. You could go buy chicken, real chicken. But now this dude right here on Friday, he going to swing by the pet store. And he, do you have an extra room? And you said, no. No, my husband. Well, he said, well, let me ask you a question. Is, is the garage attached to your apartment? <laughs> apartment. Yeah, town home. Yeah, why? Oh, okay, cool. Because we're going to have to have somewhere to keep him until, keep, until keep, I bring him. What? Him. What did you get at the pet store? Or oh, oh, the monkey. <laughs> why didn't we know that? Why? What's going on these monkey. animals? <laughs> I got this monkey going to come in Friday, girl. Wait until you see what I'm gonna have this monkey. Okay, monkey no chicken. It's zoo. and oh. chicken. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this right here on Thursdays. Uh -huh. you, you you got you, you got like an extra oven mitt that you don't use at the house. Yeah, in the drawer. Pretty okay, chicken. cool. No, no, no. This ain't got nothing to do separate day right here. You got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got more than one bottle of honey. Mm. Yeah, I got it. We're going to go through more than one? Yeah. Went to yeah. Costco. Well, I'm going to let you, you keep tea? one because I'm, no. You want tea? some hot tea? Oh, no, baby. I just, I need, I need that honey on that oven. <laughs> <laughs> what the chickens and monkeys move on? What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> that he finna get wild up in here, little girl. You need to run. If it get to that point, I can tell you right now, you you ain't, you ain't gonna be able to keep up. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, Monty in Queens. Monty says my side chick's fourteen year old son took my watch off the counter, wore it to school, and lost it. My wife gave me that watch ten years ago, and it's engraved. So it's irreplaceable. If I tell my wife I lost it, she won't believe me. What should I tell her? That's Ooh. what your ass gets. Yeah. That's exactly what you get. What you get. Yeah. Your side chick's 14-year-old boy took your watch off the counter, wore to school, and lost it. Uh-huh. Mm. Now, here's what the ladies would want me to tell you, because these are the truth tellers on our show. Especially Shirley. Yes. She's the big on truth yes. Shirley wants you to walk in there and tell your wife, listen, I made a horrible mistake. I have a side piece. And I was over her <laughs> no. house. And yeah, you do, Shirley. And He's I was not, over her house. How does this sound? How does this sound? No, okay. no, Shirley, like always, you say the truth. Yeah, but I'm very realistic. No, no, no. no. no that's <laughs> that's not going to fly. We're going to whoop that boy we... ass, though. <laughs> you going Coming up, up to the next. <laughs> we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. This is a massacre. There's no other way to say it. Officials found four people dead. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. In the early morning of November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho college students in the prime of their lives were found brutally stabbed to death in their home. We believe it was a targeted attack. Police investigating the mysterious murders of four Idaho college students now say the threat to the community may not be over. We believe it was a targeted attack. Who on earth would do something like this and why? Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. A shy girl from Boulder 
who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret, one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. Well, Steve, your daughter Lori Harvey celebrated the launch of her Yevra swim collection with a star-studded event. It went down in L.A. The party was hosted by Revolve, Lori's creative partner for swimwear line, for her swimwear line. Lori's beau, the handsome, the very handsome and talented Damson Idris. Idris was at her side, as well as some of her fellow model friends and celebrities. The party culminated with a group of synchronized swimmers performing a water ballet in the pool. What? In a press statement, Lori, uh-huh, Lori stated that for her first collection, she wanted to release staple pieces in chic colors that can be worn anywhere, any season, and will never go out of style. She added that there is something for everyone in her collection that will make them feel confident and sexy. What's so congratulations to Lori. I love Lori Harvey, mm-hmm. girl. Lori. Go, girl. She's doing yes. her thing. She's doing her thing. Yeah, she's Yevra doing. is a uh, Harvey spelled backwards. Mm. That is a, uh, the collection is really nice, though, and she's done really a good job. She works really hard. Um, you know, she she's smart. She's getting it. Mm-hmm. She's getting it. You know, we talk a lot about her life and what she's doing, and she's just an entrepreneur spirit. That's what she wants to do. We're proud of her. You know, it's it's been tough. You know, it's tough because she's young, and she's you know you famous. And it ain't you know, easy. Ain't nothing easy. Uh, you know, she didn't. She didn't live her life in that light, and 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 it's and you you got to pay in the light too. When you live in the light, you got to pay in the light. If you're gonna play in the light, you're gonna pay in the light. And that's the message I keep telling her. And so she's learning. She's getting it right. Um, uh, you know. That's good. Congratulations again. Just you know, I just hold everything in reservation. I think so far it's going real good, but you know, no problem. I can. Turn it to the light I need to. Yeah, you know, like I say, I don't care who you are and how well you present yourself. Uh, I, in my heart, for anybody that dates my daughter, I hold a, a thumbnail portion of my heart the size of my thumbnail. No matter who you are, how good you appear to be, how nice you are, I have one thumbnail portion in my heart this field with nothing but pure hatred but hate <laughs> pure unadulterated hate for you all right oh, in the we event <laughs> that i need to turn this like that i have off for you that thumbnail is right there All right, bad boys. All right, in other news, um, Usher and Kiki Palmer turned their little scandal involving Kiki's ex-boyfriend into an entertaining new music video to Usher's new song, Boyfriend. Kiki Palmer is starring as his leading leading lady in the video that was unveiled this week on Instagram. The song is called Boyfriend. In it, Usher sings, Somebody said your boyfriend is looking for me to poke fun at Kiki's estranged boyfriend, Darius Jackson. If you remember, Darius got pretty upset at Kiki for what she wore at an Usher concert uh, as Usher serenaded her. Since the video aired on Wednesday, a source close to Darius Jackson reported that he just wants to focus on his acting career and put the drama behind him. In regards to co-parenting his son with Kiki, he said, as far as co-parenting is concerned, uh, you don't have to be in the same household to be good parents. That means we threw. That's what that means. Things you say when you lost your girl. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And obviously she could care less than her. (laughs) Yeah. Because not only you pissed off what I want, now we got a video out. Yeah. Well, did they break up because of that, though? Or came shortly after that? Surely, I don't know. I don't know nothing about this. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. 
Oh, I know I you. As a matter of fact, let me know, say Steve. that I could give less than a hot dog. I know you don't know. I, I didn't even see what she wore to usher, so I don't know what the hell going on. <laughs> yes, you did. Remember, we talked about it. Uh, I really don't even know why I'm coming. I really don't. I, I love don't. Kiki Palmer. Yeah, I love yeah. her. Yeah. And Ursher, yes, yeah. Ursher baby. See you, thank right. you, Kiki. This is good news to me and everyone who loves this show. The Upshaws on Netflix is back for a fourth season. The Upshaws is based on a black working class family. It stars Mike Epps as Benny Upshaw, the head of the family. Kim Fields stars alongside Mike Epps as his wife, uh, Regina. And comedian Wanda Sykes stars as Lucretia. Mm -hmm. Benny's uh, meddlesome sister-in-law. The fourth season of The Upshaws is available right now on Netflix with all new episodes. I'm gonna so tell congratulations. you something. Yeah. I love yeah. that I'm show. A, I'm it's a, so I'm a good. great show. It's a I'm gonna tell you something. Kim Fields. Uh huh. Legend. Hands down. Oh, yeah. I will tell you the best three, the top three women that I've seen as comedic actresses, comedic actresses, is Kim Fields. Uh-huh. I, just in sitcoms and stuff. When you that that girl taught me a lot watching her, her and her mother, mm-hmm. Wendy Raquel Robinson. Oh, oh yeah, oh, absolutely. That girl comedically, and and and, and these are I'm women. Bored. These are women who are because it's hard to be fine and funny. Uh huh. <laughs> and um, uh, okay. I, I don't I don't know. I just think those two. Have been the top now. Now uh, Terry Vaughn, who played uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh-huh. on my show, Alizé uh-huh. Jenkins. Uh-huh. That girl right there, man. <laughs> yeah, man. She she was she Terry was she was boss, man. Mm-hmm. That was a bad girl right there. And the other one that I've seen that has been extremely funny to me over the years was Kim Whitley. Oh my God! Yes, yes. yes. those are my <laughs> no, four no favorite yeah. female comedic actresses. <laughs> For me. Yeah. So I uh, look forward to the Yep Shaws coming on uh, Netflix. It's there now. You can um, see it right now. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour of Fulton County, Georgia's DA is not playing around with Donald Trump. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis has uh, proposed March 4th. Uh, That is a start date for the trial of Donald Trump and 18 others. That's the one she's proposing, the date she's proposing for this trial to get underway uh, on charges related to efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. Trump's court date is one day before Super Tuesday in the 2024 presidential race. So we're not sure how that will play out uh, since he's running for president again. This indictment is the fourth one for Trump, and he has pleaded not guilty in all four cases. Prior to Trump, no former or current president has ever been indicted. Mm. Look, you can't run from jail. Get your ass in yeah. there. You don't better run no more. Well, we know that. The March you can't do that. Right. District Attorney Willis, she is playing no game. No game. No. No. You know State they have road. a Texas State woman. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they found her yet, but they have a Texas woman who uh, sent her an email and says that if Donald Trump is not reelected, we are going to kill you. Well, yep. You know that's these these. these I'm, I'm seriously, man, and they know it's a Texas woman. And they know it's an threat. email. But yeah. when they find this woman right here, she's going to do some time. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. As she should. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do some time for that. Yeah, but yeah. that's what it is. These Trump supporters, man, I just, uh, listen, man, I hope, he, you know, you know what really throws me about this whole thing? The Republicans who are going, this is political injustice. This is political persecution. This is going against what we've done. Hold on, man. This y'all system. This y'all system. Y'all, yeah. y'all Trump supporters, Republicans, your forefathers, your damn grand granddaddies came up with this whole constitution. Y'all damn people came up with this. This y'all system. Now, the moment this system is doing this to black people, it's the system. Yeah. But when yeah, the this moment this the, system Obama, yeah. turn around and do it to you, now you got a problem with the system. But hold up, y'all. This y'all system. Y'all came up with this. The yo yo funky faux fall. See, funky see, we've been knowing this funky for a long time. 
Now when the funk get on you, see, yeah. you know, see, yeah, see, it's like a skunk. It's like a skunk when it fire off <laughs> on its blast on the windy day. It's all coming back to you now. See how it goes. See, you, see, you don't like it when the stank get on you. Now the system is Funky flawed. Man. It's political persecution. No, man, it's the system. It's the system that yeah. y'all created. But the moment y'all got to be a part of the system y'all created, now it got flaws in it. It ain't having no flaws when y'all free all them cops for killing all them black people. It, it ain't none of that. It's the system. It's just the grand jury. No, no, no. Yeah. I hope they find a way to do something to his ass. So uh, that's all I'm doing. Is Bonnie Wilson is proposing March 4th as a start date for the trial. Uh, coming up next, Roscoe Wallace is here as we switch Ros- gears oh. right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, he's here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Roscoe Wallace in the building on this Friday. Girl, <laughs> <Hello, laughs> you. Oh, wait, what's going on, everybody? Hey, Roscoe. Roscoe. What's up, Roscoe. Hey, that lady. Lady, what's going on with you? Love you. Hey, Appreciate Roscoe. It. Hey, Junior. <laughs> Roscoe, my hero, boy. Hang in there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging there like you got it holding on. <laughs> what up, Tommy? What up, what up, Wasco? How you doing? Hey, no, we're going to, wait, 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 wait. What y'all need from me today? <laughs> What's up, Carla? I'll tell you right now, bro. We're going to call it. Hey, Roscoe, check this out. Yeah, let's okay. start. Let's start off. Let's get into it. I want you to dedicate a song to, we are so proud of the Fulton County District Attorney. Her name is Fonny Willis. Who you gonna say? Fight the power! Fight it! <laughs> do, 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 do. Fight the power! Fight the power! <laughs> baby, 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 fight the power! Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to segue from fight the power to Georgia. Ooh, Georgia. Heavy on my mind. Did he write Georgia, Carla? Hell yeah, I wrote George. Oh, oh everybody <laughs> talking about you. Well, hold on, hold on. What, 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 what are you asking me that I wrote something for? <laughs> I was asking How Carla, in the world you, you think I come up with a trillion dollar lawsuit and a song come up I ain't wrote? <laughs> so, Ray Charles didn't write George? <laughs> Did Ray Charles say he wrote George? Or did Ray Charles sing George? Well, he did sing it. So hello. Okay. Question was, who wrote it? Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> See where he get it from. I'm older than Ray. Yeah. Uh, okay. But let me ask you something right here. How is Ray Charles going to write Georgia and he don't know where he at? <laughs> you know what? When he crossed the line, did he see the sign? Say, welcome to Georgia. I hear he gonna write Georgia. He don't even know where he at. Man, hell, you gonna write something called Georgia, and you don't even know where Georgia at. We could have had your ass in the middle of Mississippi somewhere and told you you was going. I wrote Georgia. Me and Ray was in the car going somewhere. He crossed the, crossed the line. I saw the sign say, welcome to Georgia. And I said, Georgia, been heavy on my mind. And then Ray said, that's where we in? <laughs> and I said, yeah, Ray, you ain't seen it? And I know, oh, yeah, that's right, my baby. Now, Margaret, according- I got Ray, Ray, you ain't seen the sign? I said, oh, my baby. Oh, you here with me. Oh, now, man. according to Google, this guy named Stuart Gorell wrote Georgia. <laughs> Who the hell is that? <laughs> Stuart Gorell. Ain't nobody heard of him? <laughs> Stuart Gorell. <laughs> Boy, y'all let white folk tell y'all anything. You know, you know, you know, you, know, you do know Google is a white man, though. <laughs> oh, man. man. Are you Boy, done? you come in here. I come in here every day. I got to teach y'all something. Y'all don't know nothing. Oh, y'all call it Google. Google is a white man. <laughs> you don't even know you don't, you don't even know no black dude named Google. Who the hell gonna name they baby Google? Nah, that I, I had a cousin named Google, but I ain't not no Google. Google. Google a white man out sweet. Y'all little man tell y'all that. Who, who they say wrote George? Who? 
Burrell. Stuart Burrell. <laughs> Stuart ain't wrote no damn, George. Come on. Yeah, man. he was the lyricist. How that yeah. sound? See right there. That right right there. You see the difference between me and him? He a lyricist. I'm a songwriter. You see that? <laughs> oh! See that right there? See right, right, right there. Now you're giving us clarity. Yeah, the now here. you Just see where I'm we? coming from. Come on, give me another one right quick. What you need, baby? I want to hear Look, Temptation. Just my imagination. Just my imagination. Once again. Come on, come on. Running away with me. Oh, it was just my imagination. Check this out, Rushko. Frank phone call up next. Running <laughs> away with me. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is anyone can get it. Anyone can get it. Okay. Well, that's a we'll, we'll get that's into that. Problem. Find out what that means. <laughs> I don't think it's what you think, though. We'll find out in just a few because right now it is time for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for his nap? I mean, I'm sorry. It is time for today's prank phone call. What you got for his nap? We're going to steal a car this morning, Sherry. That's what we're going to do. We're going to steal a car. Uh... Everybody, take, don't, 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 don't look at me I, like I'm, that. I'm scared. Don't Ain't nobody doing that. Show. What? Yeah, we do you not said steal. we're going to steal a car this morning, Tucker. What do you mean? We're going to break the law on that? Uh, no. <laughs> not what we do. Y'all ain't never stole no car. That's what no. y'all <laughs> Yeah, you're well, the onlyest one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> okay, you be quiet. Now we know who has. <laughs> <laughs> Our fearless leader. This right here is stolen car. Stolen car. Cat dog, if you would. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, Trevor, please. Okay. Yeah, that's me. Sir, you purchased a uh, navy blue from. Um, a used car lot dealership called uh, Car Lot. I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago. Am I right? Right. It was six months ago. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, you've been paying notes on this car, I know, for the last six months. Right. And, right. you know, I, I hate to be a, a burden of bad news. Actually, my name is uh, Detective Justin. And I'm giving you a call to let you know that the actual vehicle, this 2001 uh-huh. Navy Blue shit that you purchased, is actually uh, a, a stolen vehicle, and we've actually been looking for this car for the last, uh, been pretty much close to a year now, maybe a little over a year. We've been looking for this. I work in the uh, auto theft division, and okay, wait, uh, hold, on. H- hold on, who you say you are again? Detective Justin, <laughs> sir, and I'm in the uh, auto theft division here at the police department. Auto theft? Ain't nothing stolen. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think you got the wrong. I think you got the wrong guy, man. Because um, my car, my car is legit. Yeah. Well, no, sir. It's, it's 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 it's, and I've done the trace on on it, and I know this is probably uh, a shock to you, but it, you, we're we're right on point with this thing. He's got a 2001 navy blue. Right. You did buy it. You did buy it at the. The car lot dealership and that right. uh and it's the exact one on the license plate sir they do match up and uh i know this is a bit of a shock to you but your car is actually a stolen car so the dealership sir actually sold you a stolen car and i know you did not know that i know that it was not any information that you already knew and I know you thought that you were just purchasing a legitimate car, yeah. but you have a stolen car, uh, Mr. Trevor. And, yeah. uh, no, man, no, I think you got the wrong person because this this car is not stolen for real. Man, this is not stolen. Sir, I can go all day with you and try to make you understand what's going on here, and I know it's probably some, some blurry information that's not clear to you, but at the end yeah. of the day, your car is stolen. I am going to have to either get someone to come out and impound it or oh. you can... No, no. I, I think y'all might need to go back over y'all records, man, because I think y'all, um, on the real, I think y'all got the wrong person. This, it Sir, all right. For real. I'm going to tell you once, and I'm going to tell you again. You have a car that's stolen that I have to have in my possession by the end of the day. Well, now, you ain't getting by the end of the day, for real, man. You got, Hold sir, on. you you have a stolen car, 
and you're going to need to bring that car into the police station so we can get this thing rectified. Man, I'm man, a, I'm I'm bringing s*** in, man, for real, man. Hold on, let me call s*** about this, man, because I don't know about all this you're telling me, for real. Sir, I understand what you're saying, but do you realize you're talking to a police officer here? I no, am you're... Detective I am detective Justin. I am man, I don't know who you are, man. I'm going to call this. Hold on. Is no longer, sir. We've had to actually shut them down for the time being until we get a, quite a few cars rectified. That I've got more than just your vehicle, sir. That's been that that has auto theft tied to it. Now, Man, hold on. there's two things: either you're going to bring it to me, or I'm going to come get it. Now, which Man, one do you want to do? To you, ain't coming to get for real, sir. I don't hold want on. to have this to have to get go to a level of where it doesn't need to be. But I need to get that car in my possession. Okay, look, look, look. Listen to what I'm telling you. Okay, are you listening? I'm listening, sir. Okay, look. Unless somebody's going to pay me my $377.52 I've been paying for the last six months. Unless you're going to pay me that. Plus, give me back my that I trade in to get this. Man, I ain't trying to hear what you're talking about. For real. Now, nah, this is you coming at me with, man. I work too hard to be keeping up these notes right here, man. And I got that and my rent to take care of, and you come to talk about you finna take my car because something that happened before I bought it, which I don't even know if this is true. Like I said, I think you messed, I think you got me mixed up with somebody else. Why the f y'all just now coming at me talking this? F I ain't heard nothing about this before. Sir, it's taken us a while to actually track down the car and actually find out exactly where it was. I've I've I've, I've tracked this car so for the last eight nine months, and I've finally found it. You are the one that's actually has it in your possession. It happens all the time. It's an unlikely situation, but I got to get you to bring it in. And I'm I, I ain't I'm, bringing shit in. You hear me? I ain't bringing shit in. Y'all not coming to get shit from me unless somebody give me my three hundred and seventy seven dollars fifty two cents. I've been paying for the last six months. Plus, my uh, sir, I'm sure you're probably long gone by now. It's, well, it's probably. That don't sir, give I'm me something. Okay, then. Then y'all need to at least just come with the money. Come with the money. I'll just go get another ride from somewhere else. Sir, I'm not, I can't sit here and negotiate with you. I'm just a detective that's on this actual case. And I know it's a trying situation, but I am going to have to send some officers out there that, that do this type of thing. They pick up these cars and bring them into the... I wish you would send somebody out here to come get my car. And if you can't negotiate with me, you need to find somebody that can. Man, no, I, yeah. You bring somebody out here if you want to. Don't bring somebody out here. I got some for hell. I've been working too hard, man. I'm working a great little shift. And I'm putting in the overtime. It got to stay late. So man, I'm, I'm working too hard to try to get this car, man. So bring out here if you want to. For real. Sir. Huh? Sir, sir, calm. I, I, I got to get you to calm down. I mean, you're getting a little you out. You can't calm me down after you and told me my, my car is stolen and y'all talking about coming to get it from me? Sir, I, I, I know this is a surprise, and I understand that. And you got a great, you got an honest living, an honest job, and I understand that. But some people have done some dishonest things, and that's what's happened here. Somebody's done that some. That's my fault. That ain't my problem right there. That ain't but, my but, problem. If they was a dead with my answer when I first got it, so why is it a problem? Nah, no, I'm not understanding that. All I'm saying is, if y'all come f with my car, I'm going to f y'all up. That's all I'm saying. You know what? I don't want to go any further. Can I say one more thing to you? Can I do that? What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your cousin, <laughs> <Wait>. Eric. <laughs> uh, who did you just say this was? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning man, Show. What's you're a tripping, man? What's up, man? <laughs> you got pranked by your cousin, <laughs> man. Trevor, you all right? Man, hold on, hold on. Hey, I got me even need a cigarette around this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Let me ask you something. You got to tell me, baby. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Man, y'all crazy, man. It's that Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> what, let's get some prank and praise up in here this morning. Come on. Ooh, Come on. Scared. Some prank and praise up in here this morning. You're going to bring this Not car back. Stealing. Car. This car, yeah, yeah, yeah. You bought it at the used car lot and it, it was stolen. We need you to bring it on back in. See, y'all don't, see, y'all didn't got so high and mighty. Y'all don't even know where the used car lot's at no more. See, y'all don't even know where they at. Y'all ain't oh. been there in a while. <laughs> You a lie. <laughs> yeah, that's not true at all. Past one yesterday. And the word is pre-owned. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's the new pre-owned. That's the new word. Yeah, yes. pre-owned. Now, how many miles on this one now? 
Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's going down this weekend, Greenville, South Carolina, at the Greenville Convention Center. Nephew, Tommy, and friends, a few tickets left. Come on out and hang out with your boy, Greenville, South Carolina. Do not admit. Now, if you in North Carolina, Greenville, you can come down to the South. But we in Greenville, South Carolina. All right? Thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letters subject, anybody can get it. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. This is a massacre. There's no other way to say it. Officials found four people dead. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. In the early morning of November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho college students in the prime of their lives were found brutally stabbed to death in their home. We believe it was a targeted attack. Police investigating the mysterious murders of four Idaho college students now say the threat to the community may not be over. We believe it was a targeted attack. Who on earth would do something like this and why? Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. (laughs) A shy girl from Boulder who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. It's time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. And we could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. It could be yours, so buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, anybody can get it. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for almost two years to a man that will not stand up to his family when it comes to me. I'm black and Hispanic, and I have curly hair, big breasts, and a big old booty. Everything is nice and full on me, and it's natural. The fact that I have a tiny waist to make makes his big bone sisters hate on me. Uh, I make them, I met him, I met them shortly after I started dating my husband. His sister had the nerve to ask me if I got my butt done. I ignored her at the time and she took that as me not wanting to admit it. When I got back to my man, when it got back to my man, he started second guessing me and he actually asked me if I was keeping something from him. His sister had him think I had butt implants. I should have known then to pump the brakes on our relationship. His mother is no better, so I see why his sisters are so rude. His mom retired shortly after we got married, and she had a potluck dinner for her friends and family. I made a pot of gumbo and homemade garlic French bread. His mom asked me, what do I know about making gumbo since I'm Mexican? My husband has let them uh, has uh, let them make remarks like this about me in my presence since I met them. My sister-in-law disrespected me last week in my own house, and the other sister and his mom laughed. She poked my behind and said it jiggles like it's real. At this point, any one of them can get it since my husband won't check them. I'm from the hood, and I was raised by the black side of my family. So this is not what they want. I made it very clear that they should never touch me. My husband said it's not that serious and I am too sensitive. I may have to knock one of them out so they will stop playing with me. I bet um, that will get my husband's attention. What should I do? 
Well, uh, you can tell them it's your real body. No implants or, or shots for starters, if you like. But ideally, I want you to have a talk with your husband. I mean, he definitely should stand up to them for you and not let them talk about your butt or touch your butt, period, because it bothers you. Um, he should care how they treat you. He should care how you feel. It's his family, and uh, he should know how to deal with them and shut them down. Uh, they are being disrespectful. Yes, they are, and the sisters and the mom are hating on you big time because of your body um, uh, and all of that. Uh, you said you were raised by the black side of your family, so tell them that's why you know how to make gumballs. The only comment from his mom should have been it was good if it was so i know i know you want to knock them out but please d don't start a fight with them all right again let your husband know how you feel and let him check his family and and get them off of you but listen don't expect much since this has been going on since before you guys got married and you knew that steve well this is an opportunity for uh you know, let the gift that I have shine. I don't Amen. think there's any redemptive quality in this letter at all, so why would I try to write one? Uh, therefore, I'm just going to comment on the letter when and however I want to. I'm really not here to help anybody today because I don't think it needs help. I have some suggestions for the letter writer that might be able to help her out, but I'm sure Shirley and Carla are going to disagree with everything I'm going to give out as advice. So prepare to laugh your ass off and just enjoy the things that I'm thinking coming from my mind. I've been married for almost two years to a man that will not stand up to his family when it comes to me. I'm black and Hispanic. And I have curly hair, big breasts, and a big old booty. Everything is nice and full on me, and it's natural. Now, the fact that I have a tiny waist makes his big bone sisters hate on me. Well, let's address this part right here. The fact that you stack and cut and built like a brick house now has his, as you say, big bone sisters hating on me. They're not big boned. Them is his sisters. You know that's who it is. It's some <laughs> sitting over here, ain't kept they self together, not mad because you done come up in here and it took a little bit better care of yourself. That's all it is. Damn, these ain't his big boned sisters. These is his big ass sisters. <laughs> Them ain't, your bones ain't that damn big. Who, when have you ever seen a skeleton and said, ooh, that's a big boned ass skeleton? <laughs> it's just a skeleton. <laughs> You have never been nowhere. You ain't been in the doctor's office and said, Whoa, look at the bones on this damn skeleton in here. Ever. They ain't never unwrapped a mummy in a tune and went, Girl, this is a big boned mummy right here. Let's stop using the word big bone. Let's stop using the word red bone. Mm. You like skin. That's it. I ain't got a damn thing to do with your bone. And you're not big boned. Because when you take all that stuff off them big ass bones, your ass is a skeleton. We talking about it, sister. <laughs> you met them after they started dating. Sister had the nerve to ask me if I got my butt done. I ignored her and then she took that I was not wanting to admit it. We got back to my man. He started second guess me and actually asked you, was you keeping something from him? His sister had him think that I had butt implants. I should have known then to pump the brakes on our relationship. His mom ain't no better, so I see where his sister got root. Well, they all the same. His mama probably big bone too. <laughs> so now they all in all these big bone people in here looking at you. Curly hair, small waist. When I come back, I will share with you some things I think you can do to counteract this. No one on this show is going to agree with me. That's why I'm going to go to the second half of this letter. <laughs> All right. Part two of Steve's response is coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject. Anyone can get it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. This subject, anyone can get it. Well, uh, chick that married this husband. She's black and Hispanic, got curly hair, big breasts, big old booty, everything nice and full on me, and it's all natural. 
And the fact that you got a tiny waist makes his big bones that sisters hate on me. We've discovered in the previous section of the letter that there's no such thing as big bones. A skeleton is a skeleton. You've never been to the doctor's office and said, wow, this one, this is a big bone skeleton in you. No, it's just a skeleton. It's relatively the same size bones on most people. Some a little bit smaller, but you've never looked at a skeleton and went, ooh, there's some big bones on there. No, there's regular sized bones, just got a lot of meat on the outside of it. Most of that meat is fat. So his sisters don't like you. I met them shortly after they started dating, and one of them thought that you had got your butt done. Stop talking to each other. Well, they're not big bones, and we need to stop using these terms. <laughs> like, a light-skinned girl is not a red bone. All bones is the same color. There's no such thing as a red bone. You're just, you're just yellow. You're just light-skinned. Let's stop saying it. And you're not big bone. Yes, yeah, it's bad. It's okay. It's nothing wrong with that. There are some people I absolutely love. Started with my mama. I love my mama dearly. Mm -hmm. I'm attracted to fat people. I don't stop you from being fat. It's okay, sir. About big bones. I like all different shades of black people. All my women been black. All different shades. I ain't got a problem with that. Now, I have some thick ones, too, now. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. Uh, Sister asked, one of the sisters asked, did you get your butt done? You ignored her. She thought that meant you was admitting and didn't want to confront her. Then your husband came, your boyfriend came and asked you, is there something you need to tell him? Because they didn't talk about it. Anyway, you started to pump the brakes on the leg. And his mom is no better because I see why his sisters are so rude. That's because his mom a big bone too. And that's how they live together. His mom retired shortly after we got married and she had a potluck dinner for her friends and family. That's another po-ass event. I've been a member of those po-ass events on several times in my life. We call them potluck dinner. The only problem with potluck dinner, somebody going to bring one of the pots. It ain't going to be some all the luck ain't going to be in it. Some of these dishes is unlucky as hell. Potluck dinner, somebody show up with some lima bean casserole with some potatoes cut in half, lined up around the casserole dish, look like a fence, and then put a ham hock in the middle of it. Well, damn it, don't nobody want that. Nobody wants your damn lima beans with your half potatoes cut, make it look like a fence and a ham hock in the middle. That's not potluck. That's very unlucky. So poor people do that a lot. So anyway, I made a pot of gumbo and homemade garlic French bread. His mom asked me what I know about making gumbo since I'm Mexican. Well, Mm. that's a fair question. Noodle. What do you know about making gumbo? But I don't see why you're so offended. Let me tell you something about me. I don't eat Mexican food that's made by black people. (laughs) I don't. I don't. I don't eat Chinese food that's made by black people. I went in a sushi restaurant, so I thought, in downtown Atlanta years ago, and two black dudes were behind the counter. I laughed so hard and walked out. Uh, you can't be no black dude and hand me no raw ass fish. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what? What's the problem? Oh my God. Y- y'all ain't got to like it. I'm just telling you how I am. If you go in a Chinese restaurant, there's all black people back there. Why is we in here? <laughs> If I go to a Chinese restaurant to eat Chinese food, I expect to see some Chinese people. Now, hell, hell, I'm wrong for that. Why would I go to a soul food restaurant and white people standing back there? I'm going home. Your ass ain't got no business trying to fool me like you make our damn food. Let's keep it real. She was raised by black people. So? That don't mean you can make gumbo. I got news for you. It's black people that don't know how to cook soul food. Yeah. So the chances of your ass knowing how to make Mexican food and gumbo kind of threw me. And French garlic bread. I didn't even know it was called French garlic bread. I just thought it was garlic bread. Well, here you is now. Now you Hispanic and black making French food. Well, how are we doing this now? Okay. Where is really? the French person at? Polly vous Francais. But that goes back to the gumbo. <sighs> See, I'm not going to be in here. Anyway, your husband to let them make remarks like that about me and all this here. My sister-in-law disrespected me last week in my own house. <laughs> 
And the other sister law mom laughed. She poked at my behind and said it jiggled like it's real. Well, at this point, this can't get away. My husband won't check them. I'm from the hood. I was raised on the black side of my family, so this is not what they want. I made it clear they should never touch me again. My husband said I was taking it too serious and too sensitive. I may have to knock one of them out so we can stop playing with me. Well, let your black side come on out then. If you really <laughs> is got that much black in you, go on knock that ass out. Black people understand why they get knocked out. Every time I've been knocked out, I understood it. I have a suggestion for you. If everybody think your booty fake, this Thanksgiving, hack your dress up and shake it real hard oh. at the table and let everybody see. Okay. We And then Brett, take a pot of gumbo and throw it on the table and walk your ass out. Leave your comments on today's letter on Instagram at CRVFM and check and us out. And bring your black ass cousin over there and have him have some <laughs> fried rice with him and see if anybody eat that. On the Strawberry Letter podcast at the free iHeartRadio app, uh, where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, Junior and Sports Talk black right people after don't this. even know how to make egg food, you <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? I need Pippin. I need oh, Pippin. Okay. <laughs> I need my boy Pippin. Nothing, man. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Pippin. <laughs> What's happening with it, Pippin? Good up in here, man. Going on, Junior. Man, 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 look here, man. <laughs> you got some pics to make, time. man. <laughs> T. Yeah, I'm here. What's happening? <laughs> I'm here, baby. I'm here. What's up, sweet Duke? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something, being a pimp, I gotta give it to you. I show like them canes. I ain't even gonna lie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's, what's, hey, what's up, ladies? What's up, Mississippi? What's happening with you? What's up? Yeah. What's yeah, up, Carl? Yeah. What's up, Chuck? Hey, Pepe, what's happening? You good? Ain't nothing, baby. What's up, what's up Shirley? Sparkle, hey, what's going on How you with doing? you? Baby? I'm good. I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I said, you know, again, man, Steve told me. Go ahead, Junior. Yeah, Pippin, I just want to get some picks, man. Starters playing this week, week two preseason, but I just want to get you practicing on your on your picking. That's oh, I, I just practice. I don't really care about preseason, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, practice okay, Pippin. Pippin. Yeah, right, my Pippin. picks will practice be reflective Pippin. of the fact that I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers, Giants, Pippin. No, oh, don't nobody give a damn thing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, so seeing as how I'm, y'all on the radio in Charlotte and New York. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, let me just go on and start some mess then. Uh-huh. Wait a minute, who is the Panthers quarterback? Oh, you know, they got Bryce Young, you know. Oh, oh, the, oh the new black dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah Panthers. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he don't know nothing yet. Giants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pippin. Let's go, let's go. With Dolphins, Texans, Pippin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Careful now. I'm going to pick the Texans. Okay. All right. All right, Pippin. All right. Because I won't ever pick you during the real season, so I might as well pick you now. Hey. Y'all going, going to well. the Super Bowl, Pippin. Yeah. To the Super Bowl, yeah. if, you go, if y'all go to the Super Bowl, it'll be with me. <laughs> <laughs> you damn right, sure ain't getting flu in. <laughs> The NFL pivot. won't be bringing y'all. That's what they don't show. <laughs> what about this, Pippin? Cowboys, Seahawks. Oh, man, Seahawks, man. Cowboys, what? I don't know what's happening right here. I don't, I don't, okay. really, I don't care about this game. Okay, Pippin. Saints, no. Chargers. Saints, Chargers. You gonna lead Dak like that, dog? Come Saints, on, Pippin. Huh? Saints and Chargers. Lead Dak like that? Dog, I, I, I ain't got no faith in Cowboys. I ain't never had faith in Cowboys. <laughs> Just give it up with paper. Saints charge. Yeah, you yeah. might as well believe in leprechauns if you think the Cowboys are going to be there too There's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, too. <laughs> Coming up. Thank you, guys. Coming up at the top of the hour. <laughs> the a woman needs some advice from Steve. <laughs> That has been someone's girlfriend for 20 years. We'll, we'll get into it right after this. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. This is a massacre. There's no other way to say it. Officials found four people dead. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. 
In the early morning of November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho college students in the prime of their lives were found brutally stabbed to death in their home. We believe it was a targeted attack. Police investigating the mysterious murders of four Idaho college students now say the threat to the community may not be over. We believe it was a targeted attack. Who on earth would do something like this and why? Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. A shy girl from Boulder who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret, one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. This is from Beverly in Lafayette. Beverly says, I'm 55 years old and I've been in a stable and loving relationship for almost 20 years. I want to get married, but he says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I want to be able to say my husband to my friends and I want to have his last name and be his wife, not girlfriend. He said a wedding is a waste of money and after all these years, we are doing just fine. Do I drop it and settle for being a girlfriend? Well, you've been settling for 20 years. You could have changed this a long time ago. You hear the old saying, heart don't change horses in the middle of the street. It's hard to let a man have his way this long and then tell him you don't want it like this no more. You just described your relationship as a happy and loving relationship. And you've been acting like that for 20 years. Now you're tired of it because it ain't, it ain't went the way you want it. You want to be able to call him your husband and take his last name. Well, he don't want that. He don't want that. And guess what you done let him tell you? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He said a wedding is a waste of money. Okay, then go to the courthouse. Okay. Mm. See, you you if if you really want to know where you stand with this man, erase all the excuses. Okay, let's not do a big wedding. Let's let's just go to the courthouse. That's what she should say to him. Yeah, yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I tell you what, I'm leaving. If I don't get what I want, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to continue. Now it's broke. Now I need fixing. See, you all this stuff y'all let me in tell you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, cool. Then I don't like it like this. I'm leaving. Now it's broke. Okay, now you need fixing. And then the other one is, wedding costs too much money. Let's get married at the courthouse. Both excuses gone now. Now where you at? You find out where you really at. Okay. And then if I and if he and if he let and if he let you go because of a wedding, or if he let you he go because you. it ain't no broken fit, you then you, I got news. For you. He happy with you the way you are anymore, and he don't want it. It's all good, man. Go by initials. Jr. Yo, Jr. You want to get married? <laughs> you got initials. CL. Well, it's, Tell CL. It's, it's it's too it's too many years. It's twenty years. Yes. Mm. Why'd you do this for twenty years? That was a marriage. Mm. You, 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 you do what everything married people do. Don't ask me about no wedding no more. Now I mean that. Don't ask me no more about no wedding. Hear me? I mean it. That's exactly what he's saying too. Mm. Come in here talking about no wedding. I done told you now. Twenty years. Mm. City Hall. Here we come. City Hall. <laughs> Either right, way, I'm getting have... some papers. Uh-huh. <laughs> papers. 
All right. Um, we have time for another one. This one says, uh, this one's from Tamisha in Springfield. Tamisha's 44. She's dating a man who's 64, and he can't finish what he starts. It's like a marathon for me, she says, because I'm trying to hurry up and finish before him. He doesn't have medical problems, and all he takes is blood pressure medicine. Maybe he is getting all worked up because I'm too much for him. How can I get him to relax and finish? Oh, he's going to have a heart attack. No, no, no. He, he oh. is finished. <laughs> he threw. See, y'all keep wanting to know wh- how you get a man. He be through. Mm-hmm. He through. He taking high blood pressure medicine. High blood pressure medicine has side effects. As do most medications. Most prescription meds have a side effect. And the side effect, now I was looking at just one commercial the other day, and the, the one of the, I, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the drug, but it was for dementia. And guess what the side effect was? What? Stroke or death. Oh. What? I'm oh. going down. Mm-hmm. What are we curing? Why are we <laughs> taking what? that? <laughs> the side effect, potential stroke or death. Well, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. that's, and that's sad for a person that has dementia. But if you're giving me the option of a stroke or death, I'm just going to sit up here and not know your ass. That's all I'm going to do. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning keep Show. Meeting new people. That's what <laughs> right after doing. this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Legendary singer and Tony Award winning actress Melba Moore received her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on August Mel. 10th. Miss Moore was joined by Jimmy Jam, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Cat Williams, and Lunell, who all spoke about Melba Moore's personal and professional impact. During the ceremony, Melba Moore revealed that Cat Williams sponsored her star by paying the big $75,000 bill that's associated with re- receiving a Hollywood uh, star, uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. On Instagram, Melba wrote uh, a public thank you to KW, meaning Cat Williams. He is the sole sponsor of my star. I am still in shock cat in me you have a friend love oh, yeah. melba forever more wow that's, oh, that's, yeah. nice. mm-hmm. that's super cool man. Mm-hmm. right that's on good, though. 75 grand yeah mm-hmm. yeah and she deserved it. yeah yeah uh, for sure yeah. Uh-huh. You, you gonna sponsor tommy star oh you gonna uh, starting some stuff this morning all right on friday just ask him okay. questions you should come mm-hmm. but does he well, need- you know, tommy got seventy five thousand. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, um, Tommy got seventy five thousand. You know, you know, y'all out on that uh, big tour. You know. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, was, y'all was just at the singer. Maybe, maybe that headliner sponsor your tour. That's who you're hey. working with now. I'm not doing that with yeah. you, man. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> you got, your, got your faith tied up in Ooh, new headliner. Look at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll have more oh, of this. Yeah, I remember I'm when sorry, you stopped Pete. opening I'm for sorry. me. I guess you. That, <laughs> we'll play around round of Would You Rather at 33 okay. minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather wear skinny jeans or would you rather wear saggy jeans? Just sagging, you know? Uh, skin. Oh. skin. I can't have my ass all that. Like skin. Can't run, can't do nothing, can't do this. this. You ever seen them? You can't run in them skinny up. jeans either. Mm. That's all right. That's all right. My, at least my butt covered. Nah, I don't want the sagging. Junior? Skinny jeans still uh, in style. I'm just going to go no. They should have never been in style. No. <laughs> <laughs> just sagging. Neither one, really. But sagging. Which, pick one. Oh, you'll take sagging? Yeah. Junior, sag on. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, I really can't show my butt, but I can't be in them damn skinny jeans. <laughs> Pick one. Pick one. I'm gonna go on and hold my pants up for the for a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, would you Would you rather per, per, Would you prefer to work with a team or would you prefer to work alone? I'll be. You prefer to work alone? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mr. New. What kind of work is we doing? No, no, no. Hold up, Tommy. Okay, Mr. What? Newlywed, you think you want to put that out there? <laughs> Would you rather work as a team or work alone? If I'm working, I'd rather work alone. I'll do that now. I work on stage by myself. I don't need nobody else. Oh, okay. So I, don't, I don't know. I was, I was Are you talking about like in a relationship? No, I, I was just thinking you might want to count the mics on this Zoom you with right now because you missed to buy your damn self. 
No, no, yeah. Uncle, I'm just saying, like, if I'm if I was doing something, like, I'd be the No, nah, you just right? said you'd rather work alone. Well, that's now. not all what I meant. Us, uh, that's not all of us sitting here about. were saddened by the remark. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you hurt your team. You're sitting up in here, man. Within, within, you know, letting you do sports team. and listening to you, and then your ass want to work alone. No, well, look, that's that not what I meant. <laughs> well, what you saying? I don't know what you meant. I was thinking about when well, I was working back at General Motors. I wasn't a good team member on the line. I couldn't no, no, do the calls what like you that. said, she said now, would you rather work as a team or work alone? And your ass said, I'd rather work alone. And you noticed that none of us say nothing. I didn't know that. That's what y'all was thinking Because we was all sitting here going, well, damn. <laughs> That's not what I was saying. What the hell is we coming to work for, helping his ass out? No, I was... I was talking about working when I was a kid, working at General Motors. I was, I was talking what? about. We didn't know you. Yeah, I wasn't a good team member. See, 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 well, see, now let me show you what team do. Now mm. you're trying to take that back like your hairline. Yeah, see, <laughs> and see, that see. Oh, 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 that's we what we doing now? Well, 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 we well see, that's what happens when you, when you leave your team out. You know, we <laughs> so all in hairline go back again. <laughs> now all of a sudden, you, now all of a sudden, right. you want to work alone. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Oh, you want to just come, come to work with no hat on, don't nobody say nothing. <laughs> We're going to move on. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's how you want to be now. <laughs> Would you oh rather have three? Oh, well, I'm, for... so, I'm sorry for having the Steve Harvey morning show. I couldn't okay. get had the day <laughs> Steve time. Harvey. Go ahead, ah! please, say it again. We don't have time. <laughs> just say it right quick anyway. Okay, would you rather have threesomes forever or never have sex again? Oh, we're going to have these damn threesomes. Yeah, let's fill this room up, partner. Yeah. All right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up next, our last break of the day. And we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. This is a massacre. There's no other way to say it. Officials found four people dead. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. In the early morning of November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho college students in the prime of their lives were found brutally stabbed to death in their home. We believe it was a targeted attack. Police investigating the mysterious murders of four Idaho college students now say the threat to the community may not be over. We believe it was a targeted attack. Who on earth would do something like this and why? Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Here we are, last break of the day, guys. Before we get to the closing remarks, um, officials in Maui have confirmed over 100 deaths and the devastating fire that destroyed most of the city of Lahaina. Uh, President Biden plans to visit Maui on Monday. Ahead of his visit, Biden has made all federal resources available to Maui, including FEMA personnel and National Guard soldiers. You can help Maui's relief efforts with a donation by simply texting the word Red Cross to 9 90999. That's text the word Red Cross to 90999 if you want to donate today. Steve? All right, good. Hey, my closing remarks today is going to be a little bit of encouragement. I uh, was in a at a dinner last night with some business people, and they were complimenting me on a lot of stuff they see on me on TikTok, so forth and so on. I was sitting there listening to him and the guy asked me, he said, Mr. Harvey, if, if that was one piece of advice you wish you had known all along that you, that you know now that you wish you had known all along. And it was very simple because it took me to something I was talking about recently. I was watching, uh, something on TV and these group of older actors were sitting around and one of them was Tom Hanks. And they were talking about what's the one thing you've learned that you wish you had known. And Tom Hanks said, this too shall pass. And I I can't tell you how that resounded with me because had I known that years ago, like I know it now, I could have saved myself a ton of worry. I could have saved myself blood pressure I could have saved myself anxiety, you know, because anxiety 
is usually produced from your worry or concern about what someone else is going to do. That's usually the base of most anxiety. You are concerned about something that someone else may say or do, and it causes you anxiety. That, that's not all of it, but that's a lot of it. If you think back in your life, how many times you've been concerned with what might happen to you based on what somebody could do or say, and you become anxious about it? Well, that causes anxiety. I wonder how they're going to feel. I wonder what happened when I walk out here. I wonder what happened if they see me do this. I wonder what happened if they find out I ain't got it like I said I had it. I wonder what would happen if they ask me this. I wonder what the jury going to say. I wonder what the police going to say to me, ask me. Anxiety. But when I heard Tom Hanks say, this too shall pass, I thought about all the worry I've had in my life, all the moments of anxiety, worrying about something that was beyond my control. When you are overly concerned about something you cannot control, it produces anxiety. And everything I've ever troubled myself with, everything I've ever gone through and was thinking how ins unsurmountable it was. Do you know that every last one of those things in my life, as well as yours, you have gotten past them all. Every single one of them. When you were worrying about the outcome, no matter how the outcome came or went, you survived it. You got past it. See, now I know that this too shall pass. Now I know when I'm in a valley that I ain't going to stay there always. Now I know when, 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 I, when troubles befall me or beset me, I already know that this too shall pass. I've had so many experiences over my 66 that I have learned completely that no matter what has happened to me, no matter what befalls me, no matter what set of circumstances I find myself, no matter how chance plays out in my life, it's going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to get through it. This too shall pass. So now when stuff happens to me, I have a track record of surviving so much stuff, and I want you all to look at yourself this way. You have an outstanding track record of surviving hard times and bad situations. And if you think about it, and I've said this before, your track record for surviving hard times and, and, and bad decisions and hardships, your track record for surviving them is 100%. You have survived them all. Even if you're in the midst of it right now, can't you see how he done wrapped his arms around you? Without you asking, can't you see how he done covered you? The slings, the arrows, the fires they starting, the bullets they shooting, the arrows they got coming your way, the writings, the gossip, the rumor, the haters, the dislikes, the comments, the blogs. When you look at all of it, you still here. And you're going to be all right. You know why? Because this too shall pass. And it will. Keep that in mind, y'all. No matter what you're going through, this too shall pass. Keep the faith. Keep praying about it. Prayer without ceasing. And just know that this too shall pass. And it will. Now, it may not pass when you want it. That's for sure. But when you walk through the fire, you will not get burned. Nor will soot and kindling and soot be on your clothing. That means you can walk through the fire and you won't even have no signs of it when you come out on the other side. Now, it won't, that God didn't say it wasn't going to be hot in there now. He just said there won't be no signs when it's over. Y'all keep your faith. Talk to God. They love you. Hey, it's For all
All Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. Breaking news out of Moscow, Idaho. It was an unimaginable crime. The bodies of three women and one man, all 21 or under, were found together. The victims were attacked with a large knife. It's a bloodbath. It's a crime scene investigator's nightmare. Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. (laughs) A shy girl from Boulder who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret, one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. Yo, what's up? You know who it is, DJ Scream, co-host of the Big Facts Podcast right here on the Black Effect Podcast Network. Each and every week, myself, Big Bang, Baby J, we sit down with some of the biggest artists and influential minds from the culture, like 21 Savage, Lil Baby, Jeezy, Trick Daddy, and so many more. Tap into the hottest podcasts in the streets. Listen to Big Facts on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For the streets. Exactly. It's Big Facts. No cap, no cap. Hi, I'm Arda Marine. And I'm Brian Soppy. And we have a new comedy podcast called No Autographs, Please. Every week, hilarious guests join us for a chat. And then we improvise a first date based on real first dates listeners have submitted. And of course, it all ends with us making a homemade peanut butter cake for our guests. Listen to No Autographs, Please, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.